reminds us in a beautiful hadith by saying that al mandana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al maut wal aajizu man atba'a nafsahu hawaha wa tamanna ala Allah it's a very short hadith but a very powerful hadith so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is talking about two kinds of people and this is what we want to understand that who are those two kinds of people and clearly the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa approves one kind of those two types and the other kind is disapproved so we want to make sure that in our life we are among those people who are being approved or encouraged by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith so he says al kayisu man dara nafsahu he talks about al kayis and the people who are al kayis basically who are wise people who are thoughtful people who are smart people so how do they become smart? How do they become wise? How do they become thoughtful? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that Mandar and Afsahu that they are able to control their whims and desires. We are led by our whims and our desires. This is human beings. Allah has created us you know, with that nature that our instincts, our desires, our whims dictates us. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that Mandara Nafsahu, that whoever has control over their whims, their desires, their lusts, Dara Nafsahu, wa amila lima ba'd al maut, and they work for the hereafter. So, three points here. Number one, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that, that let us try to become Al Qayyis. And Al Qayyis is the one who is wise, who is thoughtful who is smart, who is clever. And in order for us to become al kayis become clever, become smart, become wise, become thoughtful, then this is what we need to do. Mandara nafsahu, that we need to have control over our instincts, our desires, our whims. And if we don't have control over that, then we would be lost. Mandara nafsahu, wa amila lima ba'd al maut, and we should be working for the hereafter. The second type of people, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying that Wal ajizu man hawaha wa tamanna ala Allah. So making a contrast between al kayis and al ajiz And al ajiz in a simple way you can say the foolish people. Not so smart, not so wise. al ajiz Okay. And the description of those people are man, man atba'a nafsahu hawaha. That those who follow their whims and their desires. It's completely opposite. al kayis who has the control over the whims and desires, and al um, ajiz who does not have any control over himself. His whims and his desires and his lust dictates him. But at the same time, وَتَمَنَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ And he hopes that Allah will forgive him. Some of us, you know, we do whatever we like, and then in a, sort of at the back of our mind, that inshallah Allah will forgive us, and Allah will, you know, sort of uh, overlook that. Yes, Allah will forgive us, but if we persistently and consistently follow our whims and desires, then we would be misled. Now, what we see in this hadith, that the focus is on the hereafter. The focus is on the hereafter. But we need this life in order for us to build the hereafter. And therefore, we need to invest and utilize our resources in this world. So in a different hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, al dunya mazra'atul akhirah. That the dunya, this life is mazra'atul akhirah. It is like saying the, the farming ground for the hereafter, this dunya. So therefore, in order for us to be successful in the hereafter, we have to invest in this life and we have to utilize our resources so that we become successful in the hereafter. And I'll briefly mention five resources. See, if we look at our normal life, our professional life, 
There is no, not a single successful corporate business without a HR department, the Human Resources Department. So I'm going to very briefly mention five resources that we have. If we don't invest them in this world, we cannot be successful in the year after. Number one resource to invest for the year after is our health. Because without the health, we cannot work. We cannot worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why you know we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying Allahumma aafini fi badani, Allahumma aafini fi sami'i, Allahumma aafini fi basari. We ask Allah, oh Allah, give us strength in our physical body. Give us strength in our hearing ability. Give us strength in our sighting ability. Because with the physical health, the physical strength, and the hearing ability, and the sighting ability, we walk around, we move around, we invest, we do good things in our life. So this is why, this is one of the resources that we need to invest for the hereafter. The second resource is the wealth. And often we find in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions both together, wealth and children. Al-amwal wal awlad mentioned in the Quran. So the second and third resources, the wealth and our children. When I say children, it's our physical strength, it's our muscle. Because when we get into trouble, what do we do? We use our muscle. We use our family members, our friends, our gangs and everything. This, we use our muscle to get away. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that you know, wa al -fitna. Interestingly, what we find in the Quran, the usage of both in the Quran, that amwal and awlad, wealth and children, are a source of fitna and a source of ni'mah. So it's a double-edged sword. That the amwal and awlad, wealth and children, is both, if you, if you don't have control over that, it will become a source of fitna. You, will be, you and I will be tested. And if we can have control over that, then they become ni'mah, blessings. We all can see that, that you know, in our life, in you know, wealth and children, our family members are our ni'mah, blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ On the day of judgment, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ That what will not benefit you and me, mal and banun, wealth and children. And again, as I mentioned, that when you and I get into trouble, we use our muscle. We use our money. We use our wealth to overcome. But Allah is saying, on the day of judgment, your wealth and your muscle will not come to benefit. Except the one who comes with a qal, which is salim, a sound qal, which requires, again, nourishment. Number four resource is the time. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ There are two blessings that many of us we waste those two blessings. And then he says, السِحَّةَ والفراق. The health and the free time. These are two blessings that Allah has blessed you and me with that many of us we waste it. Instead of utilizing the time, we kill our time. The concept of killing the time. So therefore, again, the time is a resource that we invest so that we become successful in the year after through becoming successful in this world. Because at dunya mazra'atul akhirah. This is dunya, this life, we have to utilize it in order for us to become successful in the year after. Last but not the least is our life. In its entirety, in its totality, is a, is a big resource. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ إِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ That Allah talks about certain people, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي They sacrifice their life. For what? نَفْسَهُ إِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ Seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, our entire life, and within that, our health, our wealth, our children, our time, if we utilize for one purpose, one objective, that is ibtigha to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What that means, that every time we do anything with our health, with our wealth, with our children, with our time, let us think about that will that attain, secure the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or will it gain wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where we have to be kayis, smart, wise, thoughtful, and not ajiz, foolish. 
then you can see inshallah that we're utilizing all these natural resources that Allah has blessed you and I with. Every individual is blessed with those resources. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to, to be able to utilize these resources in order for us to invest for the hereafter and become successful in the hereafter.